Hi everyone, this is Mary Lurson, Executive Director of the NAM Foundation, and we are at day three from the NAM show here in Anaheim, California, and welcome to Facebook Live via our great friends at Intertalk Radio, and also we'll be up on Talking at Music Education, the NAM Foundation podcast. So day three NAM show Saturday, we've just completed the grand rally for music education, and we opened up that, that wonderful hour we had together with Jonathan Daly and his jazz ensemble. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you, Mary, for having me. Jazz. Welcome to everybody in the room. Thank you very much. Jazz trumpeter extraordinaire. First of all, tell us what we experienced this morning. Tell us about your band and what you played and, and opening up our grand rally. First of all, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, at 9 a.m., we got here bright and early and opened for Eric Whitaker, a fantastic composer, arranger, musician. Uh, we also got to play with Bernie Williams. Uh, the band is from New York, and we very excitedly flew here a couple of days ago. Uh, thanks again. Infinite, oh. inf infinite thanks. Absolutely. And the band comes from all over the world. Our guitar player is from Israel. Our bass player is from the Virgin Islands. Our drummer is from France. And I think it shows how New York is a network, f you know, the world comes together. Um, everybody's excellent at their craft, and that's one of the things I really hold dear about the band is uh, you know, what an eclectic background of musicians mm -hmm. we've had, and, and that's, been, that's been great. So five-piece band, six-piece band? How we are a five-piece band plus me. All right, so you're the, you're the lead, you're the, the, the front man. The allegedly, trumpeter. allegedly. Right. Allegedly. Well, we're going to give you that title, all right? Thank you. Front man for <laughs> a quintet ensemble, right? That's right, yeah. and we have two keyboards. One keyboard is a, I really should say, one piano and one keyboard. The piano is in the jazz tradition, and keyboard uh, it's great. You know, technology has allowed us to obtain so many different sounds through keyboards, whether it's roads or strings. I, I love the notion of, or, you know, in my head, <laughs> pretending that we're, you know, we're on stage with six of us and there's a full orchestra behind us. Yeah, there was a lot of synth sound going on this morning. A lot of, we heard, um, uh, tell us what you played this morning. You did, uh, from the Sound of Music, Raindrops on Roses. We right? did. Never uh, quite heard that way b before. That, I mean, it was gorgeous. We did My Favorite know? Things. My Favorite, yes, My Favorite Things. That was the name of the tune, but I knew the lyrics. The, the lyrics, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we did it kind of like in the vein of, of John Coltrane. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that featured everybody in the band. That featured our drummer, Raphael Penier. And I'll, I'll never forget, probably as long as I live, when I asked the crowd, are you ready for a drum solo? And a wave of 600 screams came my way. I just looked back at Raphael. I was like, all right. We're in the right place. We're in the right place. We've got the right audience here. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was Saturday morning. <laughs> oh, if I neglected to mention, this was jazz at 9 a.m., folks. Yes. Not always the time of day where we jump into jazz. This right? is our first 9 a.m. show. <laughs> as a, as a well, I'm glad it was at the NAMM show. Yes. The Grand Rally. So did you form this band? Did I you, did. Did you kind of say, let's, let's kind of see if we can take this on the road, right? And so it was senior year of college. Uh, and I had just worked an internship on Wall Street, believe it or not, and that's what I thought I was going to do, and I had prepared myself as such. <laughs> and So you weren't in music school? I was not in music school. You I were in, like, business administration, finance major, that kind of stuff? I went to a liberal arts school called Williams College yeah. in Massachusetts, yeah. and I was an English major, mm -hmm. the, the art of persuasion, I guess, because mm -hmm. everybody asks, how did, how, did you, how did you get a job on Wall Street if you were an English major? And I, I never know what to say. Um, I just I worked hard at it and got lucky, of course. But going into my senior year of college, I music education was a part of my life, but not necessarily on the radar going forward. I really thought I was going to be, you know, a banker, a suit, mm -hmm. a banker. Um, and probably the vestiges of that are left over with what. Well, I'm you wearing. know, you're you're you know, this really looks good for a trumpeter fronting a band. I, I appreciate. You I wore pinstripes because of Bernie. You you never you never knew that you know that there was a lookalike, but until today, right? The banker and fr trumpeter fronting a jazz ensemble really worked. I think that's the vibe. Yeah, I think experience. it really works. All right, so you went in, you did this internship in Wall on Wall Street, and yes. you kind of went time out. I went time out. It was the longest period I had ever spent away from the trumpet. Um, it was like a nine-week internship, and I was working from about 9 a.m. until 2 a.m. Which is what so they do to interns. Yeah, right. so it was like, you know, it was over 100 hours a week, and something just clicked. You know, what I had thought this world would be fell short in a number of ways, and I missed music so intensely. So even as an English major, you were playing at Williams. I was. You were in ensembles, in and ensembles, you were... all that, all that yeah. jazz, uh, literally. 
And so senior year came around and one of my professors at school said, why don't you just apply to grad school and see what happens? And I'm somebody who really likes to plan things out well in advance and, and that spontaneity didn't necessarily sit well with, with my and habits. And that wasn't the plan. It was not right. the plan. And I went in for an audition at Manhattan School of Music in March of my senior year and was admitted with, with a, I'm very grateful for the scholarship as well. And it, it, just like that, just like that, my, my you know, course turned. So you got a master's in jazz studies? Is that That's at right. Manhattan School of Music? That's right. That's where I met Bernie Williams. Oh, yeah. And he was there after a 16-year uh, career as a New York Yankee Center fielder. Um, and we had met him along the way. And I'll never forget the phone call he made to me one afternoon and said, you know, I'm thinking of applying to the Manhattan School of Music uh, in jazz guitar. And wow. I said, what do, you, what do you think? And I said, I think you've got to do it. Absolutely. And now, you know, that was, um, you know, t older than you. I mean, a different time in his life, but someone, too, that had a, had a journey, a path, right? And then all of a sudden, and, and I remember him telling, telling me, I just realized how important education is, you know, because he was a ball player early in his life. He did have some higher ed, but he didn't have a, a degree. Yeah. And he went and got a, his degree in jazz studies. And he was very inspiring for many of us in yeah. the school. Well, you may, we were funny this morning, he was also one of the students that was followed around by New York sports press, uh, right? Absolutely. I mean, the guy's a big deal. <laughs> the guy's a big deal. He's a big deal. Everywhere, but mostly in New York. He, right? His jersey, number 51, when I was a kid, was the first baseball jersey I ever owned. Number 51, I'll never forget it. I played with his character on video games, you know? And to just think, 10 what years... What video games is he in? You know, like back when PlayStation 2, yeah. and they would do like, you know, MLB 2K. Oh, I love four. that. I'll have to find this. Um, <laughs> they might be out of print now. <laughs> but, but don't they have another version yeah. of it? I mean, now it's... Right. You know, and, and oh, just to, to think that I would run into him in a, in a professional musical capacity 10 years in and advance. You and you played together this morning. I played together this morning, thanks to MSM. And it's, it's mind-boggling, actually, that we, that, you know... Yeah. Well, that's great. So you, 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 um... You um, left Wall Street behind and never looked back. Yes. If Bernie's Basically. thing is from center field to center stage, mine is from... What's wow. the cross street down there? Uh, it, was on, it was on Madison Avenue. Okay. So maybe from, from but Wall Street to Main Street. I don't know. Wall Street to Main Street. Or Trademark. Main Stage. Wall Street Trademark. to Main Stage. Wall Street to Main Stage. I think that could, be, that yeah. could work. We can work on that. I okay. think Bernie and I can tour with that. Yeah. That would be a start. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, you know... Off, always on talking at music education, we want to know the origin stories. You give us a little bit of a glimpse sure. of back in the within the last what five to six, seven years, but we like to go way back. You know, when did the trumpet like land in your life? Was it an elementary school band? Was it a, you know, middle school band or orchestra experience? What was that? I was in public elementary school, and third grade. They said, okay. It's time to rank your instruments from best, you know, f favorite to least favorite. And I went drums, saxophone, trumpet. Ah. They filled all the drum spots. They filled all the <laughs> saxophone spots. And I got left with this beast, <laughs> which is, which was and still is very difficult to play. Any trumpet player can attest. And I linked up with this fantastic teacher who happened to be the director of, of the band, uh, Phil Gray. And he just happened to play trumpet. This was in your hometown? This is my hometown. On Where'd you grow up? Uh, Long Island. Long Island. Cold Spring Harbor, New York. Okay. And he was really just a mentor for me. He was the one who got me involved in competitions. At the time, that meant classical. Fifth grade, he was like, oh, man, man maybe you should check out jazz. And he's the first person that in introduced me to jazz in That's fifth good. grade. You That's know, uh, auditioning for the all-county bands. And then all-county became all-state and the national level. And, and then it just, it just became a passion, of jazz music. Uh, but even then, I never, ever suspected that it would become... I never thought that I would have the audacity to, to, to pursue a career in music because it's so challenging. Right. It's, so, it's so challenging. Um, yeah. Well, that's great. You know, what we're working on collectively is the, that every child has that opportunity. It was there for you in third grade. Yes, it was. It shouldn't be like, oh, you have to live in this town or that town over doesn't have it in the next town. You know, I mean, that really is our shared effort. Yes. So uh, when someone like you is, is on the path, you know, that's so wonderful. Always remembering that we want that for every kid. The importance know? of education, not just in private communities, but in public communities, is essential. 
Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not too updated on the on the particulars of how of how government funding makes it makes it. We down. can help you with that. When you're ready to learn that, we can help you. That's we'll talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but right now, just keep playing your heart. We need we need more of that music. I'm, I'm ready than to we make do. my government <laughs> transition. <laughs> no. But we, you know, that's really uh, the the work that we do through the NAM, NAM and NAM Foundation to go um, and move those needles forward. But uh, we also need, you know, the voice of artists. You know, making more music. Well, that's that's wonderful. Do you keep in touch with your your teachers? You go home and and you play and play back in school every now and then. Phil or? Gray, this is for you. This is his horn. Oh my goodness. So the mentorship has. This continued. is his horn. This is this is his horn. He he had heard that I was changing horns and he said, yeah, I have one I, that I don't play. Why don't you try this? I tried it, fell in love with it. It's a Yamaha. Um, Did you play it this morning? Was that the instrument you played this played morning? Played it this morning. Play, I'm going to play it at Lincoln Center. This is My the baby. My goodness. So the teacher started the student and then the teacher shares the instrument yeah. with. Now I got to buy him a car. I, I, I guess, or happening. something. Yeah. Something, you yeah. know, it's got a, I I at him. least a convertible or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something yeah. really jazzy. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. Okay. It is. We've been here a long time. It's several funny. days yeah. anyway. Yeah. So, what artists inspire you the most? Uh, there are two trumpet artists that come to mind. When I was a kid, I would listen to Wynton Marsalis more than any other artist. I mean, his technical facility speaks for itself, but he's, he's also brilliant. Yeah. He's, he's brilliant as an intellectual man. Musically, of course, but also entrepreneurially, he yeah. he dreamed up and executed jazz at Lincoln Center. Yeah, he's he's With, phenomenal. He, yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. As I figured out where I want to go artistically, I started listening more and more to Chris Bodie, ah, who yeah. combines <laughs> familiarity of music with. Uh, you know, intense artistry. That he, what an incredible musician yeah. he is. I mean, so technically sound. And and I've, I've seen so many of his shows. He's actually performing tonight at the Wiltern Theater. I'm going to try to go. And I've seen his show, and the way he mixes artistry and accessibility re is really such a fine balance. Uh, and, and so so I always listen to Winton, and I think he'll always be the muse. But But... Um, I'm, I've really taken a liking to Chris and, and his his concept for a live yeah. show. And they're they're very very different, right? They but, are very but different. But they represent um, real studied artistry, right? Intentional yeah. studied artist. In, exactly intentional artistry. Yeah, yes. that's just great. Um, I met um, Wynton Marsalis's father w several years Ellis. ago, Ellis, wow. and actually he gave a master class to some kids in New Orleans and. And, you know, Witten always talks about how his dad was tough, you know. And and his father said, yeah, Witten practiced. He was the kid who practiced. Yeah. Brantford didn't practice so much. Yeah. Right? But you hear that in his playing. You hear someone who he just did the woodshed, right? I mean, oh, he must have how many thousands of hours of overtones, right? <laughs> Has he right. been buzzed? I mean, he just right. was relentless. And you hear it. In one note, and he's also yeah. he won a, a classical and jazz Grammy in the yeah. same year, yeah. I think 1983, which is, I mean, you know, yeah. he's he's brilliant. So you got a great hero, but I also would say, hearing you really for the first time, you're you're right there. <laughs> just <laughs> I mean, that's just me saying it. You know, I'm not a, but you know, you hear the study, you hear the intentionality, you hear the drive to something really, really big and perfect so I appreciate that keep so much. going I, I have so such a long way to go to even come close to those guys um, so you know the life of a jazz musician I mean you know you're a young jazz musician in New York you got your own group you're playing at jazz at Lincoln Center you play first time at the NAMP show not last time at the NAMP show or blah, blah, blah. what's the best week ever for a, for a jazz musician a young jazz wow. musician not afraid to dress up and have, you know be out there in the world. What's the best week ever? The best week ever is realizing that you get to make music with your friends. And all week long, wherever you can, right? All week long. Yeah. I mean, the artistry of, of, of the folks in my band is fantastic, and they make the show, you know, much more than I make the show. Uh, and being able to laugh before stage, you know, tell jokes about when we're about to go on, you know, like, oh, don't trip. It's just, uh, it's a camaraderie, mm -hmm. and, and it's a shared purpose. It's collaborative, and it's fun. It's really fun, and, and I think that's what hit me when I was working. 
I was like, man, this is not fun. <laughs> like I, I loved, I loved studying English in college. I loved reading, you know, cultural right. theory and writing essays. I'm a nerd. Get secrets out. Uh, I love that. And nerd is in. Ner yeah, ner nerd is in. <laughs> let's, right. let's be really clear. That's yeah. right. Uh, and and what, yeah, when, when I was working, I just wasn't having fun, and I think that that was the thing that clicked. Is like I would, I really want to try at least try something career-wise that makes me happy, that's fun, and and playing with the guys is so fun. And you know what? You get to have fun in life, and why shouldn't you pursue? The thing with the most passion. We talked Absolutely. about this morning at the Grand Rally. Yes. You know, with Eric Whitaker and his remarkable compositions. And, Eric is fantastic. You know, what we were able to do together in the room. 600 people singing. and oh, It was really pretty great. So so your best week, ever, best week ever is making music, whatever is on the schedule that week. Yes. Sounds great to me. So how can we stay connected to your work, your career? And where do we follow you? And what's, hap you know, give us all the brass tacks. You got it. Um, I have a website, jonathandaily.com. D-E-L-Y is how you spell my last name. I'm pretty active on Instagram these days. We Just all have to be, or we don't exist. Got to play the game. Right. So Jonathan underscore daily on, on Instagram and then Facebook and, and other, mm -hmm. other mediums as well. But I think, I think Instagram is probably the And best. your schedule? They can find your schedule on your Facebook page? Schedules and on Instagram and website and all that okay. stuff. I try to keep it pretty updated. And yeah, tunes, down, download tunes, download. Yep. Oh, YouTube, forgot to yeah, mention. Yeah. yeah. Albums? Album yet? So Where? I'm recording my first live album in cool. two weeks oh. at Bruno Walter. Really? Absolutely. Got to sign that release. They said oh, it was okay. Wow. Absolutely. That's a Valentine's Day concert? That's a Valentine's Day concert. First now album. Now I think I'm going to have to be there. Please come. If it's Valentine's Day and you're recording live for an album? Yes. Yeah, I think I... My my date list is not long for that night, so I'll come and be with you. Thank okay? you. Thank you. <laughs> That'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> I shouldn't really admit that, but, you know, that's okay. It's all right where we are. It's out there now. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. So we're going to end with something, right? Yes. We're gonna, so are, are we all set up for it? We're going to have a little live from Talking at Music Education concert? Absolutely. Who's here in the room with us? This is my good friend and amazing musician, Andrew David Friedman, playing hey, a Korg Kronos, it looks like. Yeah. Andrew played with us this morning for the Grand Rally. He was playing all those synth synth ah, pads. Okay. Really adds a lot of texture to the to the to the uh, to the sound. So I think what we're going to do is play the song that we performed with Bernie Williams. This is entitled Hallelujah. Is that okay? In tribute to Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen. Leonard? Yeah. Too okay. soon. Too soon. Are we all set? Got a little uh, camera where all our audio's go. We just go, right? Okay. I get to sit in the middle of your band for a minute.
you and all of us in the room. Thank, Thank you. you. And all of us, hopefully all of you that heard us via Facebook Live and are talking at music education, hallelujah. hallelujah. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Something to be so grateful for. Jonathan Daly here with us at Talking Music Education, live from the NAMM show. Thank you so much for joining us for Talking at Music Education, a podcast of the NAMM Foundation.